my name is Paul Rogers. Um, I, I own Paradise Ranch. It's an indoor therapeutic riding facility. I do therapeutic horseback riding for uh, children and adults with all disabilities. The parents will usually notice that something something's off with their child, usually between 18 months and 24 months. They'll start noticing maybe they're not they're not talking as much, they're not as verbal as maybe they used to be. They start doing a little regression, maybe they're potty trained and then all of a sudden they lose it. And they start noticing uh, their children will be very, um, very fixated and interested in, in like a, an object or, or dribbling sand through their fingers or, or just little small details and things like that. And what I'd notice with, with a lot of the kids, especially the ones with autism, you know, they'd have the auditory sensitivity or they'd have, uh, be, be very distracted by things that were in the environment, birds and, and other horses and other riders and stuff like that. Or if it was real hot, they couldn't ride because it was too hot or, or it'd be raining or something like that. And it would, it would cause a real bad day. We focus on behavior, uh, behavior modification, using the horse as, as motivation to do the work, um, whatever those goals might be. So. Having the psychology background, I, I mostly focus on behaviors more so than the physical. But they get that anyway. They get that core strengthening and that flexibility from the horse anyway without even actually focusing on it. The message to be sent to parents who have children with autism is that the more that you can expose your child to, the more therapies, the more experiences, whether it's horseback riding or or uh, learning about animals, or, or ABA therapy, or, or this therapy, or that therapy, is to expose them to as much as possible. Hopefully get past, at least to a point where they're able to, to uh, navigate society and be productive, so. Autism is a spectrum. Autism goes from Einstein and Steve Jobs and half of Silicon Valley down to somebody that remains nonverbal um, with many, many medical issues. It is a continuous trait going from very severe to just geeks and nerds and uh, a lot of brilliant people uh, like Einstein. I'm concerned, uh, you know, what they're planning to do on the change in diagnosis is take out the uh, Asperger's. A lot of those kids are going to get shunted over into uh, social communication disorder. I know that part of the reason they want to do this is that have less You're people diagnosed with autism to cut down on school expenses. Uh, um, one thing in the diagnosis change is that it's actually correct is that there's two core criteria. There's the social communication problems and then there's a the repetitive behavior and fixated interests. Where it leaves science is how many subcategories under those things you have to have to get the diagnosis. And if they just took out one or two of those subcategories, then it would remain the same. When I was a young kid and loud noise went off, it hurt my ears like a dentist drill. There's other kids I don't have this problem with fluorescent lights bother them like uh, flickering the discotheque. You know, sensory issues are very, very mild, can be very mild or they can be very severe, very, very variable from being very debilitating to just being a nuisance. Well, if a kid fixates, fixates on a train, teach reading with a train. Teach math to the train. Read about the history of the railroad. Take that fixation and broaden it out. Now, let's say he wants to just do pictures of trains. Let's do a picture of the train station. Let's do a picture of a city where the train goes to. Get an associative link back to the fixation. I found that there's kind of different kinds of specialized minds. There's a visual thinker like me, who thinks in photorealistic pictures, absolutely can't do algebra. Then there's the pattern thinker. This is a more mathematical kind of mind. These are the kids that also might be engineers, computer programmers, musicians, have trouble with reading. Then you got people that are word thinker. They're really, really good with words. And you get combinations of the different kinds of minds. Also, some people are auditory thinkers. Well, I think totally in pictures, and it's shown very clearly in the HBO movie how I think everything is in very specific pictures. What really helped me was, again, really good teachers who helped me. Mr. Dion, my math teacher, I'd go in his office after class, he tutored me through the math class. Um, the uh, dean's wife uh, was a real good friend of mine. She was kind of a different kind of person. I'd go over to her house on Sundays when I got lonely. It was really good teachers. Also, my science teacher. I still kept seeing my science teacher after I graduated from high school. I'd go over to his house on weekends and do science projects. You know, these important mentors really make a difference. You need to find uh, 
I'm a teacher so I can help you. I seeked these people out, you know, and I would uh, ask them for help. Well, one of the, another thing is I think it's very important to be learning work skills. I mean, kids need to be learning work skills in high school. If paper routes still existed, I put all the kids on paper routes. They don't exist anymore. But you could do dog walking, you could do fixing computers, make greeting cards and sell them. People need to learn work skills. And when you're in college, you need to be doing some internships that are career relevant. You need to major in things that are going to make you employable. And there's a lot of students with maybe a two-year community college degree would be what they ought to do. I just had a, had a student come up to me that wants to be an emergency medical technician. That's a two-year uh, degree at a community college.